This is the brand new $300 Mongoose Ardor mountain bike that is packed with features. For just $300, this bike has a tapered and slack head tube, big tires, dropper post ready, and a clutch derailleur. More on the features later. This bike is $200 cheaper than the Axum DP, which leaves you plenty of money for upgrades down the line, which I think are gonna be necessary to make this a viable trail bike. With very limited information on this all new bike, I have a lot of questions. If you're new here, my name is Evan and welcome to my channel. The questions I have about this bike is how does it ride? What makes this bike so good? The geometry. What are the downfalls of this bike? I wanna know about the wheels, if they can be tubeless and the internal rim width. And the last question is if I recommend this bike and is it worth upgrading? But before we get to that, let's talk about building up this bike. Putting together a mountain bike can be a daunting task for some, especially if you're new to the sport. But I'm here to tell you, it is so easy to put together a bike. Luckily, this bike comes partially assembled and all you'll need to put together a bike is an Allen wrench set and a 15 millimeter pedal wrench. The first thing that needs to be installed is the seat. You should put a little bit of grease on the seat post if you have it. Then take the faceplate off the stem and install the bars. It's good to see that these bolts are already greased. Make sure that the bars are centered and positioned to your liking, then evenly tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern. Then it's time to get the front axle out of the box and throw some grease on that too. Just gonna insert that into the hub and then install the front wheel. But without a bike stand, I prefer to work on the bike upside down. Make sure that the axle is nice and tight, but don't go overboard. With the bike upside down, it's a good time to install the pedals. Just know that the threads on the pedals are opposite, both pedals tighten down if you hold the wrench and spin the cranks backwards. Flip the bike back over, and I like to push the front tire against a hard object while sitting on the bike, then tighten the top cap on the stem to properly seat the headset bearings. Don't go too tight or else the steering will feel pretty stiff. Then straighten out the bars and tighten the stem and you're almost complete. Now give your bike a thorough inspection before riding. These bikes are assembled very quickly in a factory. In my case, the front brake cable is hitting the tire and both brakes are rubbing. Quick little readjustment with my Allen wrenches and my brakes are running perfect. The shifting is perfectly tuned right out of the box. And in my case, I'm gonna add some slime to the tubes because I deal with cactus spikes out here. Make sure you turn the clutch on the derailleur to the on position. Mine came off from the factory and now it is finally good to go. All right, out here at the trail, I'm gonna try to take it easy. You know, I don't really know this bike yet. Oh, let's take a wrong turn. Oh, I'll get some chain slam. All right, we're getting a little bit more technical here. Oh, lots of chain slam. That was a rough ride. Well, I said I was gonna take it easy, but I must've took a wrong turn somewhere because I ended up on the top of this trail called North Star, a trail with some drops and jumps and a lot of exposure. So I better walk down. Are you silly? I'm still gonna send it. Oh man, this is gonna be sketchy with these worthless brakes. Here's the drop. Oh. Oh man, my back. Well, the ride is complete and I survived. <laughs> Question number one was how does this bike ride? And it was pretty rough. The bike is pretty playful and it seems like it has a lot of potential. Just because I rode a Black Diamond Trail does not mean I did it well. I don't recommend taking this bike on Black Diamonds right out of the box. I'd stick to the green and the blue trails. I did really like the 27.5 wheels because they're more playful and maneuverable. The front fork is just horrible. I don't think it absorbs any bumps at all. And my back is just toasted from all those jumps and drops. I'm five foot nine and I felt like this bike was just a tad too small for me, but I think a 50 millimeter stem would fix that. The large volume tires really help soften the ride and all the bumps. And I don't think I would have had any fun on this bike today without those tires. The bike jumped well and it cornered pretty good too. All the riding that you saw was on the stock pedals and I didn't slip a pedal one time. Quick tip, if you're having a problem slipping pedals a lot, you should probably consider that your form or technique needs needs to be adjusted. Question number two is what makes this bike good? First off, the tapered steer tube. This was a bold move by Mongoose because it opens up a ton of options for tapered forks down the road, which will absolutely be necessary if you wanna take this bike on any real trails. Second, the slack head tube angle. We'll get to those numbers soon. Modern mountain bikes have a slack head tube angle, which makes the bike more stable when descending. The next great feature is that this bike is internally routed for a dropper cable, which I dearly missed on my ride today. Another bold move for a budget bike. Everything that I've mentioned is a feature of the frame that can't be changed. In my eyes, we're purchasing this bike for the features of the frame because all the parts on the bike can be replaced and upgraded, but a frame can't be modified. For all these features on a $300 mountain bike, it's just mind blowing. 
the bars are pretty wide at 735 millimeters and they feel much wider than the Schwinn Axons. The clutch derailleur is another bold move for a budget bike. Even though I had a ton of chain slap, I didn't drop my chain once, but I think a chain link needs to be removed. Question number three is the geometry. The head tube angle is 66 and a half degrees and the seat tube angle is 74 degrees. That head tube angle is the same as the Vetus Nucleus and much more slack than the Schwinn Axum 67.8 degree head tube angle, making this bike the most slack bike on the market for the money. The slack head tube angle means that the bike should be way more capable on the downhills with an upgraded fork. And I think it puts this bike in the trail bike category. If we put a longer travel fork on this bike, the head tube angle will be even more slack. And I think that this bike has major potential to be a downhill monster. The C tube angle is 74 degrees, which is really great to see. The higher the number, the more comfortable it is while climbing. For reference, the Common Saw Meta HT has a 65 degree head tube angle and a 74 degree C tube angle. And the Santa Cruz Chameleon has a 67.3 head tube angle and a 72.8 C tube angle. With these stats on this mongoose, this bike has major upgrade potential. Question number four was the negatives about this bike. And the fork was awful. It's not really a suspension fork at all. And I think it needs to be replaced pretty quickly if you're gonna do any kind of trail riding. The biggest downfall for me is the 27.2 millimeter seat tube diameter, which is a major misstep in my opinion. With a seat post this skinny, it really limits your options on which dropper seat posts that you can get. 27.2 dropper posts are much more expensive and they're not as common on the used market. The rear clutch derailleur didn't do much and I still had a lot of chain slap, but hey, at least my chain didn't fall off a million times like it did on the Schwinn Axum. And the brakes were downright scary at times. I'd probably make that my first upgrade. The last negative is the slip on grips. I wanted to flip around the shifter and the brake lever, but it's much harder without lock on grips. And that's one thing that the Axum had. Question number five is the wheels. There's not really a lot of information about these wheels and I wanna know if they can be made tubeless and the internal rim width. And now that I have them off, the internal rim width is 25 millimeters, which is pretty disappointing because most trail bike rims are 30 millimeters wide. And it's not entirely clear if these can be set up for tubeless, but throw some Gorilla Tape on there and I'm sure it'll hold. These are 32 hole wheels and the back hub has a free wheel. So if you're gonna upgrade the drivetrain, you have to either get a new wheel or a new back hub. Because the eight to 12 speed group sets, require a cassette hub. Although the range on this freewheel is the biggest I've ever seen, 14 to 38 tooth. Question number six is, do I recommend this bike and is it worth upgrading? And I can't really give a full recommendation just yet. There's too many limiting factors on this bike to know how the frame fully performs. For a newcomer to the sport, absolutely, I recommend it. And if this review helped you and you're gonna buy the bike, click the Walmart affiliate link in the description to purchase the bike and I'll get a small commission and it'll cost you nothing extra. And lastly, is the bike worth upgrading? Well, you're gonna have to subscribe to find out because that'll be the next video.